Hey, what's good, y'all? Fusion here, back with another reaction video. Uh, today we're going to be reacting to uh, some more first take. Um, Paul George, PG, PG-13, compared Bronny James to Drew Holiday and Derek White. Um, I think that's a good comparison. I would want to be compared to those guys. I think they both add um, something very important to your team. Uh, great defense, great energy, athleticism. Um, one thing that I think he he could add more to his game um, is that defensive aspect. We've seen in the draft uh, combine that he can hit the three, he can get hot and hit the three. Um, even in his games, uh, you see the athleticism, uh, you see him driving to the basket, taking tough floaters, um, and making most of them. I think his game is made for the NBA. If if, if you watch his game, it is very uh, a controlled. Um, he's making the extra pass. Um, he's making the correct play. I think in the pros, it will work. I think currently how a basketball um how or, um organized basketball um excuse me like AU um different high school teams it is very iso based it is very uh clear out i'm going to make this crazy move on you um it is basically a showcase um which is good and bad um if you do want to hear a video on that, please let me know. Um, I personally think that there are um, like good things about it. Um, as far as like player development, it does force you to learn how to have an ISO bag as well as learning how to do everything instead of just being the defensive and a three-point shooting guy. But on the flip side, can you play um, with the team and sort of humble yourself and be like, I'm not the best player, but... One thing I do know how to do well is sit up in this corner and hit a three. Can you be able to do that? I mean, will you be able to do that? Excuse me. Um, so I think that's like the a double-edged sword of it. Um, and I think that Bronny can do that. I think Bronny can learn how to fit in a role. And I think he'll learn and find a way to get on the floor. Be it as the defensive, uh, as the defensive guy, as the pass-first a point guard, um, playing with pace, learning how to um, run a good pace. I would have him definitely watch like some gameplay of Drew Holiday and Derek White. Also, some Chris Paul in there, um, some Mike Conley as well. Be that. What's the best way to um, like describe it? That young leader type of role. Be that guy who is like, hey, I'm gonna set you guys up. My whole job is to put you guys in the best position to score. But on the flip side, if needed, I can find a way to get my buckets. I think his rookie year, if he does make it to the league, decent point numbers, but high defensive numbers, um, high assist numbers, high rebounding. I'm expecting if he were to get into the league, I want from him at least five assists. And five rebounds a night. Um, his points, I don't think he's, he's going to get a lot of minutes early. So, I could see him averaging about four or five points a game. Um, if even that. But hopefully he does get to there. Around 1.7 or 8 steals a night. Um, and minimum turnovers. Not having a lot of... T having a lot of... Turn uh, having a lot of turnovers. Excuse me. That would be a good stat line. For Bronny at the beginning of his year, of his rookie year, I think if we, we can see that, see that type of play from him, see the uh, basketball IQ um, being displayed, then I think it will work for Bronny. But that's my whole spiel. Let's go ahead and hear what they have to say. The finals over. The NBA draft is next on the calendar, and one of the biggest stories is where Bronny James is going to land. Our experts have Bronny going in the second round, but if you ask Paul George. He thinks his ceiling is way higher than those projections and thinks his game can mirror that of a two-time NBA champion. Paul? 
I think he can be. Shout out to the podcast P as well, bro. That's there's a lot of NBA players and past NBA players um, making podcasts. I think his is really good. Um, I like Draymond's. I think that. I consume a lot of podcasts, like content just in general. Um, my work like allows me to listen to music and uh, sometimes I don't really want to listen to the music. So I'll listen to a podcast. Um, but Draymond Green's like breakdown of the game and certain things about the game. I always find that interesting. So I do like listening to Draymond. Um, who else? I don't like uh, John Wall's podcast. I don't really care for what he has to say, like, <laughs> to be honest. I mean, he's cool, I guess, but it's just not my type of thing. Um, and there's one more that I listen to, like, religiously. Uh, Jeff Teague's podcast, uh, Club 520. That shit is funny as fuck. That shit is so funny, but yeah. So shout out to Podcast B, a really, really good podcast. Be a lead at a lot of things. Like I feel like he, he's like in that Derek White, and it was interesting that that's his comparisons that he wants to be like or coming out look like. Um, but I compare him to like the Drew Holiday, the the Derek Whites, like guys that are glue guys that can go do everything on the floor and help you win. Like that's kind of how I see him. Mm, high praise from a guy who knows a thing or two about playing um, elite he, defense. So, big for he's done his Haslam. You rep the what the fuck is that Do you agree with what PG had to say about Bronny? I agree to the point where he's going to be a glue guy and like a role player, but I don't agree with the comp. Uh, we got to realize Drew Holiday is knocking at the door of the Hall of Fame, right? We're talking about arguably one of the greatest perimeter defenders this game has ever seen. Uh, and, and he's standing at about 6'4", six, 6'5", six, right, Drew Holiday, when you stand next to him. When I look at, when I think about Bronny, I said this, I believe Bronny's ceiling is going to be an Eric Bledsoe-type ceiling, and that's pretty damn good. Like, he, if he keeps working, it's going to, like, and hit his full potential, and especially in his prime, he could have an Eric Bledsoe ceiling. That's not going to happen this year. I don't believe it'll happen next year. But can he come in next year and play and come in off the bench and provide some quality minutes for a ball club? Absolutely. But the Drew Holiday, Derek White, we'll talk about two of the best defenders, wing perimeter defenders in the game. And then Drew Holiday, we're talking about a guy that's knocking at the door of the Hall of Fame. I don't think he's like comparing them. I'm thinking, well, at least like to me, it sounds like that that is what he should be shooting for and who he should be trying to emulate. That's sort of how I took it. Um, I think he can be elite at a lot of things. What's more of him? Yeah, like, that's what it sort of sounded like to me. And I could be wrong, but that's how I I interpreted interpreted it. Fuck it. I don't know how to speak. Anyway, um, but I agree with Perk. I just, it's super hard to tell what type of player Bronny is going to be. But his build and how he plays, he does play like a Derek White and Drew Holiday. Of course, not at the defensive level. Um, and I agree. I think that Drew Holiday is in that discussion of being in the Hall of Fame. And I think that there's an, there was a moment where he could have been the finals MVP. And I'd argue he was second in the running. So, I mean... I just think that I can see him trying to become that and what he should be trying to emulate right now. Eric Bledsoe, he was a good point guard, um, an athletic guy, a uh, fast-paced guy, uh, worked well on a lot of athletic teams uh, where passing and cutting and trying to get the backdoor cut um, and, and trying to touch the paint was great. Can he do that? And will teams need that? He should be trying to play more like, um, yeah, just like these guys. Like a defender who can um, get on the break and 
run as well, but Eric Bledsoe wasn't that great of a defender, so you need to be more on like the defense side. Especially now, there's a lot of great guards, and I think that, uh, and I personally think that defense is coming back. Like it, it was a very low scoring finals because of grinded out defense from the Celtics more than anything. So um, yeah. Wendy, Molly, everyone's talking in code here. Everyone's talking in code here a little bit about Bronny because when they talk, when they bring these players up, what they're basically comparing him to is undersized players. Because the biggest thing that Bronny has to deal with is he measured in at six foot one. That's taller than me. Six one. For an NBA player, it's just undersized. And so if you're undersized in the NBA, you have to do something, maybe even two things, but at least one thing at an elite level. And if you look at a guy like Derek White, this is a guy who does multiple things at an elite level. He is an all defensive player and he's an excellent shooter. Good block. Uh, Bronny is not that type of shooter. Not now. You know, he doesn't have to be now. We talk about, I understand why Paul George brought up Drew Holiday because, and Paul George grew up alongside Drew Holiday. They're both from Southern California. Drew Holiday went to US, uh, USCLA, Bronny went to USC. He didn't have a, you know, dominant uh, freshman season at UCLA before he came out. Um, Drew Holiday is a couple inches taller than Bronny. Uh, Bronny has a, does have a good wingspan and a great vertical. He measured over 40 uh, inches in his vertical. But I, you know, and I appreciate what Paul is saying. And again, Paul watched uh, uh, Drew Holiday as an 18, 19 year old up close. Um, but let's stop comparing him to Hall of Famers, as Perk said. You know, <clears throat> let's stop comparing him to all defensive players at this point. Like he is. He's a project, and, and what people are try dancing around is that for a player at 6'1", you've got to do something really special. You're talking about guys who do things really special. Let's see if he can do it, but I'm not sure the comparisons are helpful at this point, to be honest. I thought he was 6'4", so that's my fault, y'all. 6'1", uh, um, I still think that the type of play that he has to be like is like Drew Holiday, being a great defender. Being a uh, shooter who can hit the shot, especially now that I know that you're six one, and I think that even takes into account when he does um, attack the paint and hit those floaters. I think that's even shows better. And he's a very athletic guy. The problem is you're six one, so what you need to do. And I think that this is something very, very important for, uh, I don't know if a lot of high schoolers or college uh, guys do listen to this, uh, like to my videos. But if you are a shorter guard, you need to have excellent handle and can shoot the ball. That's the most important thing for a smaller guy. I think that the defense is also very, very important. Um, but early early on if you know you're not gonna be six four six five um if you know you're gonna be around six foot and six one maybe six two and your goal is the nba you gotta be able to learn how to have great handle and hit those shots you gotta be able to um make the three uh, you gotta be able to shoot over like defenders uh, you gotta be able to shoot with a hand in your face those are things you got to work on. If Bronny can get that, and I'm pretty sure he has that to a certain extent, just from him being able to knock down those shots in the combine, um, and hopefully that is showing that he is working on it, then there's a good chance he could at least be useful off the bench, maybe a, a, a few minutes here and there. But I think he needs... Pro experience. I think we all need to see if he can do it, if he can keep up, if his basketball IQ can translate over. I think that's his best thing. I'm wondering if it can transfer over. And the only way we can find that out is in gameplay. So I hope he does get on a roster or uh, get to the summer league. If he does get to the summer league, he has to show those things, though. Great handle and great shooting. Um, of course, like some defense in there, but great level, uh, great handle and great shooting. So let me tell you something about NBA scouts. NBA scouts love to look at a guy and say, he reminds me of this guy. He reminds me of that guy. 
he can do this guy. He can be this guy in two or three years. Is he a Drew Holiday right now? Hell no. Is he a Derek Wright right now? Hell no. But you understand who his father is? His father's LeBron James. He's very calculated. If he said Drew Holiday, if he said Derek White, you don't think Braun got this man sitting down watching All right, y'all. Um, I think that I'm just going to go ahead and end the video here. Um, <laughs> All right. I respect Haslam's, you know, like point of view. He was part of that Miami run. He was a very important uh, pick setter. Uh <laughs> I'm just kidding. Pick center, uh, rebounder, uh, great uh, rebounder. I don't even know. Who cares? It's just that I don't need you dicks like a LeBron right now. Not right now. I mean, we understand he's probably going to be watching film, which is something that I said earlier. But I don't think that that's, I don't think you should have brought him up. This is all about Bronny, not about him being LeBron's son. And I think every single time we bring up a LeBron in a Bronny conversation, it's going to just be hard, harder for Bronny to push past it. That's what I think. Film of Drew Holiday and Derrick White and saying, hey, if you know what kind of player he needs to be, what kind of player he can be to make an NBA roster and to have an impact as soon as possible, I'm going to tell you what we said to Miami Heat. If you can rebound and defend, we got a spot for you. So if he can rebound and figure out a way to defend and do different things like that, then he's going to have an opportunity to play for a roster. When you look at what Drew Holiday did, he was either rebounding, defending, or he was knocking down big shots. He was not the focal point of that team. He has been the focal point before, but he is not the focal point of that team now. So I guarantee you, if Bronny said Drew, if Bronny said Derek White, he watched a film of Drew Holiday. He watched a film of Derek White. He's trying to implement the things that those guys do into his game so he can be that type of guy to help a team win. That's why he said that. He ain't just throw it in the air, but they don't throw nothing in the air when it come from over there. Everything they do is calculated. I get that UD, but guess what? Coming out of high school, I wanted to be Shaq. I watched a lot of film of Shaq and Elijah one. Damn it, I wasn't nowhere close to it. And that's okay, okay. at the end of the... But hold on, hold on. Hear me, hear me out. But I'm at the listen, end of the I'm day, here's where, it com here's where it comes down to. With um, Yeah, bro. I, I said earlier that, you know, he, he needs five rebounds, five assists, you know, uh, some great steals, great defensive numbers, low turnovers. Um, but 6-1 changes things. Of course, you got to be able to defend. And if you are athletic enough, you can, you know, sneak a couple of rebounds in. I think he should be watching Josh Hart as well. He's a great rebounding guard. Um, But I think there's a lot of things he he needs to show for it to be worth getting a 6'1 guard. So he needs to be a jack-of-all-trades guy. And that's hard to put on somebody. That is very hard to be like, this is what you got to do. Show up on on the defensive end, get rebounds. But since you're 6'1", you have very, very limited offensive game to a certain extent, unless you have a great handle um, like Allen Iverson, Kyrie, uh, Chris Paul, those type of players. Um you got to be able to knock down a shot. I just think it's a lot going on for him, man. Um, but let's hear out what Perk got to say, and then I might end it there. We're talking about the same thing that Wendy is, what Wendy alluded to, and I alluded to. When you go and stand alongside Derek White and Drew Holiday, bro, they are six five, borderline six six. We're talking about Bronny being that six one. That's why I came, I came in closer to a Eric Bledsoe comparison. More so than the Drew Holiday. Yeah, he's because right. I believe that Bronny could that be my a fault. My guard fault. offensively because his ability to be able to stretch the floor. He's a decent shooter, above average, in my opinion, three-point shooter right now. I believe that he's going to be a pretty damn good shooter in years to come in the NBA. On the other side of the ball, I think he's going to be a guy that needs to pick up 94 feet. I think he's going to be a guy that needs to fight to get over screens. Like, I'm just saying, when you talk about Drew Holiday and you talk about Derek White, starting off, these guys are 6'4", 6'5", maybe even 6'6", 
at the gate. So what y'all wanted him to say? Some that's true. That's true. Um, yeah, I didn't realize he was 6'1". So that's on me. I think Perk is right with the Eric Butso conversation. I think that uh, he should be on like the defensive end. He should be very, very honed in on picking up early. On some Patrick Beverly type shit. But that's what I'm saying. He needs to do too much for us to show that uh, he is worthy of a spot. And I don't mean to say it like, like he has to be chosen, but that's just how it is. And I think there are better guards that you could get. So what warrants it? There's a lot he's just going to have to prove. Um, but defense is important. He needs to find a way to be a great defender like Drew Holiday and uh, Derek White. But he has to be able to have like an offensive uh, game. Sort of like how Eric, Bl how Eric Bledsoe can uh, shoot the ball. Um, had a decent mid-range. So those are things he's going to need to learn how to do. But hopefully he can figure it out. I think he'll be... If he could at least get the defensive side going, he'll make a roster. And if he can learn how to knock down the shot and have a great handle, he will be a eighth or seventh guy. And if he can find a way to make it his damn near the only thing he can do and you need him to knock down the shot or you need him to defend great um an offense of guards then i think he will be an integral part on a roster so there's three steps to it and i personally think he, he could do it i think he has a good iq and i think that's enough sometimes to uh fast track your growth and have you learn how to play the game better um, but that's all I got for you guys. Um, shout out to Bronny, man. I hope you got it, man. Cause I think that there's a lot of smut being thrown and I do think it's because of like a, a lot of, uh, just a lot of pressure from LeBron from being his son, from, um, just all these outside things. I hope he can be all right, push and I'm praying for success. So yeah, like, comment, subscribe. Hit the link in the um, hit the link in the description to become a member. See you guys later. Peace.